We can use Ampere's law to update the electric field components in the grid. In order to apply Ampere's law, we need to know the four magnetic field components circulating around the EZ components and their indices. Then using the right-hand rule, we can figure out the signs of each of these four magnetic fields in the update equation. Let's take a closer look at this. First, let's create three for loops for updating all the EZs of the grid in each Cartesian direction. Here is the K direction for loop. It's the same, the limits here are the same as what we had in the two-dimensional model. We're also going to have an I direction for a loop, which is the same as what we had also in the two-dimensional model. And now we're just going to add a J loop. And here it starts at two because um, one is our PEC and it's going to go to J max minus one because at J max we also have a PEC. Then we're going to write the EZ component for updating it. It's going to have three indices and that's equal to CA times the EZ component at the previous time step plus CB times, and we're going to have our four circulating H fields, H, Y, I, J, K, minus H, Y, I, minus one, J, K, plus H, X, I, J, minus one, K, minus H, X, I, J, K. And then we can write N's for each of these. This is how we would update the EZ components in the grid. Okay, well the next thing we need to do is we need to create a fully three-dimensional FDT decode with ground on the bottom, TML on the other four, five sides, and with a total field scatter field plane wave source condition so that we can continue our study of the crane. All right, well, I'm not going to make you create such a code. At this point in the course, we do have enough knowledge to create such a code. We, you have uh, learned all the basics of all the components of that kind of a model, and you could do it. But it would take quite a bit of time to write and debug such a code. Since we have a limited amount of time in this class, and there are other things we should cover, I'm going to give you a 3D code. This code will already have the PEC ground, PML on five sides, and the total field scatter field plane wave source condition that starts at ground level so that it can fully interact with the crane. You'll find this code posted along with the slides corresponding to this lecture. Go ahead and have a look at this code. It has the same overall structure as the 1D and 2D models that we constructed earlier this semester. Here's the update equation we just created for the EZ component of the grid. Notice that these are reversed. I'm used to writing it this way for another programming language. Uh, so you can just reverse those. Compared to the codes we've written this semester, one main difference in this code that I'm providing is that I manually vectorized the code. Not 100% of it, but most of it. So for example, for the easy update written here, I got rid of the for loops, and in place of i here, I put in two to i max minus one, which is the range of i's. And in place of j, similarly, I put in 2 to j max minus 1, and so forth. So now my update, instead of that, all those for loops, I have what's written at the bottom of the slide here. I don't normally manually vectorize a code because I don't find it as easy to work with. Usually I use an optimization flag to have the compiler vectorize it for me. We'll discuss this more later. The reason it is usually a good idea to run a vectorized code is because in general they are more efficient and run faster. Anyway, the vectorization is the main difference between this code and the codes you've been writing so far. For now, run the code as is without making any changes to it. You should see a plane wave propagating across the grid in the total field region. Right now there are no objects in the total field region, so we will not see any scattering into the scattered field region. Now when you run this code, two plots are going to be created. An XY plane through the middle of the grid, and then also an XZ plane through the middle of the grid. 
MATLAB is going to put both plots right on top of each other. And it's going to be hard to see what is going on if you keep these plots on top of each other. So right after the simulation starts, just move one of the plots over so that you can see both plots evolve over time. 